السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة Concentration of Muslims actually live in Indonesia. From? Yeah, and Indonesia is in Asia. So, yeah, they're like they're like ninety five percent Muslim there. Eighty four percent. Really? Eighty four percent. Oh yeah. yeah, just check that. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody. This is your host, your co-host Muhammad Hassan and Jabril Salam. So that right there was a skit that we just played out that happens lots of times, especially for Jabril being an American Muslim. Um, and that really didn't happen between us. I know better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We would have got the wow. But you know, that, I see that happening all the time. I mean, every time Jabril and I go out, and I tell them, you know, I'm Muslim, I'm from Egypt, automatically they assume Jabril has to be from some foreign country. Exactly. So when he tells people he's from Norfolk, Virginia, they're like, same thing I said. You must be within the nation of Islam. <laughs> you know what I mean? You must have converted. There's yeah, no way you were yeah. born into the religion. I've gotten there a lot. And we're going to be talking about race and religion. I mean, really, when it comes to religion, there is no division, you know, within yeah. the race. Um, and probably a little bit of things that both of us experienced in our life that had nothing to religion. It wasn't right, you know. Mm -hmm. But we were being put off to the side, whether it's by our skin color, the way we looked, you know what I mean, where we were from. Yeah, where, just, how we dressed. It's just ridiculous, you know yeah. what I mean. And we want you guys, full disclosure, to know that that's not what the religion of Islam promotes whatsoever. Yeah, we're sharing our experiences of things that we've gone through uh, when we are profiled and we're stereotyped by other Muslims. Yep. And what's funny, you would think that that would happen by Muslims who are from other countries. Exactly. I get stereotyped by people who are from America. Who actually lived here the whole life. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I've been stereotyped by people who are African American. I've been stereotyped by people who aren't even Muslim. You've been stereotyped by African Americans? Yeah. And non Muslims. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand, people in this country, especially look at black people like we're like we're a spot. You feel me? And so whenever somebody sees you, they already they they have this prejudice that mm -hmm. you're dangerous mm -hmm. and that you're you're up to no good. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times when people have that perceived notion mm -hmm. of you, mm -hmm. even though you could be nothing of the sort, yep. they are already reserved, right? Um, if you aren't dressed a certain way, they're already reserved. Yes. And so when you say, As they, they look at you and they're like, okay, so you had to convert or something. Yeah, like, exactly. they, don't, they don't just take you as you are. Mm -hmm. However, if you're Arab and you got long beard and you're, you know what I'm saying, like you have a little bit of an accent, automatically you're deemed good yeah. and there's no questions that's crazy i mean when it comes to non-muslims you know that kind of makes sense you know what i mean but i don't excuse it come from muslim that's some shame on you i don't excuse it even from non muslim no i don't excuse it because think about it, that's like saying oh if you're white you're automatically a christian right. that's what but that's what people think mm -hmm. right or if mm -hmm. you're black you're automatically a christian yep exactly. right that's if true. you got a big nose you're automatically a jewish person mm -hmm. like that's that to me is is very ignorant mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to excuse it just because that's not your religious belief is i no, i don't condone that at all mm -hmm. i think it's it's asinine mm -hmm. i mean even coming from egypt there's 20 percent of egypt um it's coptic christian you yeah. know a lot of people don't know that and when i'm going to egypt and i'm interacting with different individuals i can't tell if they're muslim i can't tell if they're christian you know we just kind of yeah. live our daily lives you know what i mean exactly and we all 
we all live and in, in, intermingle one like with one another, and we have no problems. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't come up. Then it's like you get to America, and soon as somebody's from a different religion, from a different place, they're just broken up. You know, exactly. one thing that I never understood, and I would love for somebody to educate me on, is uh, I know within the Catholic religion and I think within the Christian religion, they have a whole bunch of different sects sectors. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think in Islam. There's the Sunni Muslim, there is the Shia Muslim, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't go by any of those. Yeah, I don't, you know I, I, I'm I mean? Muslim. I don't identify. When people ask me, are you Sunni or Shia? I'm like, I'm just Muslim, bro. You know what I mean? La ilaha illallah, I'm Muslim for the law. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what I believe in, you know, and, and that's what I go with, so. Exactly. It, that stuff doesn't really matter mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Like, whether you're Sunni or Shia, it doesn't matter. Like, I saw this one uh, woman, she recently converted, yeah. and it was like this big, she, it was almost like she was revealing the baby, like, am I going to be Sunni or Shia? And, and when she was like, you know, I've decided to be Shia. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like an uproar or something? Yeah, like people were like, oh my God, that's evil. And I'm like, yo, like, that's so crazy. It's crazy how people reacted to her, you know, saying like, what she wanted to go down as far as like the track, mm -hmm. uh, right? Mm -hmm. Like the certain practices that Shiites have versus Sunnis versus, um, other other types so that to me was was baffling to see how people reacted right and to see how <laughs> you read the phone to see how people were were approaching this woman that mm -hmm. recently converted mm -hmm. simply because of the sect of religion that she wants to to apply to oblige to mm -hmm. um, but to stick on race yeah this woman is Mexican. <laughs> that's what's funny, right? Like, that's what's funny. But I guarantee you, Ironic. she still won't be profiled as much as somebody who is African American mm -hmm. or somebody that's a, a darker skin because she's not very dark skin. Mm -hmm. uh, and this isn't to to focus on her. It's just mm -hmm. to say, like, people are profiled a lot based on their their skin. Mm -hmm. All right. I've seen white Muslims, like Caucasian Muslims, mm -hmm. American Caucasian Muslims that are profiled because they're like, hold on, but you're white. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean you're Muslim? Yep, is that impossible? You exactly. know? And then, I mean, what I think is even just more ridiculous is that they undermine your knowledge too because you're not from Afghanistan, because you're not from Saudi Arabia. Oh, well, he's Muslim, but he doesn't know much about the deen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And then you have to explain yourself. You have to basically go out there and meet these different expectations. Show like, hey, I can sit at the Muslim table. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. Because we sit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, like, there is no table. I mean, what, what expectations? I mean, the only expectations we have is just being good to each other. I mean, exactly. and that's why we have some different ayahs in the Quran that we're pulling up, just so we can kind of show that there is no, you know, bigotry, racism that is not accepted within our religion whatsoever. I mean, exactly. we have zero tolerance for that. Exactly. You know? And even with, when I met you, Jabril, it was a little different for me because growing up in Northern Virginia, all of my friends were from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Egypt. Yeah. Even if they were black Muslims, they were black African Muslims. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're from Libya. Uh, they're yeah. from they knew, they the knew, West Coast. They knew what I mean, country they came from. They're from the West of Golden Coast, you know what I mean? Ghana, gotcha. Senegal, they knew, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I'm so used to when I'm meeting a Muslim, awesome, bro, you Muslim, assalamu alaikum, my brother, where are you from? That's the first thing, because I'm so used to have yeah. a whole bunch of different backgrounds, you know? And then when I met you, like, oh, I'm Muslim, awesome, bro, where are you from? Virginia. No, bro, where are you really from? Yeah, no, I remember that conversation. <laughs> it was know? like, you were genuinely confused yeah, and... and that was I've experienced that before, you yeah. know. So like, I didn't go to school with a lot of Muslims. However, going to other mosques, a lot of like one of my good friends, uh, Ishmael, I still talk to him to this day. He's mm -hmm. living in Nigeria now. Mm -hmm. He, um, you know, like there was no difference. Like he never asked me that, but yeah. it was. But we knew, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And you could just tell certain people would like treat you differently because you weren't from somewhere else. And and you, even if it goes unsaid you can feel it. You mm -hmm. can feel the vibes. You can feel the looks people give you. Um, like you said, people undermine your knowledge mm -hmm. or like... Put you, you know, through a few tests. You gotta yeah, do some hoops. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it's weird, man. And, you know, the more I learn about this religion, the older I get and the more that I understand the Quran, mm -hmm. the more I accept people from, no matter where they're from, mm -hmm. no matter how they look, because you can't judge people 
off face. Like you can look like the most perfect Muslim. You can wear the 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 sandals and the jolly beard and have the long beard and you know dicker beads on you at all times, prayer mm -hmm. mat on you, but you can still be a horrible person. Horrible person. Mm -hmm. You know, horrible. Islam Islam is about the intent and the actions. Yeah. If your actions are of a true Muslim, if if you follow the way of Rasulullah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you are a true believer. You're a true Muslim. You it's not about, you know, pray. look, my dad said something in a cup by the other day and that, yeah. it blew my mind, right? He was <laughs> Ali like Salam. Ali <laughs> D D Jones. <laughs> but um he was like the Muslim that sits in the mosque all day and prays all his prayers is no better than the Muslim that's actually out in the streets giving dawah, mm -hmm. right? And that's why, you know, what we're doing with this podcast, I don't know a lot of Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. I know I made certain mistakes yeah. that, you know, somebody, even a beginning Muslim, somebody that recently converted will look at me and be like, yo, you didn't know that? Yeah. However, I've been raised in the deen mm -hmm. and my actions speak louder than yeah. the Arabic that mm -hmm. I know or mm -hmm. the amount of Arabic I can recite. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I genuinely believe that that is more important than being able to recite, you know, half the Quran. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I would agree because those, the recitation is supposed to turn into actions. You know what I mean? It's exactly. supposed to hit you in the heart. Like, man, I, when you read it, it's supposed to give you that tingly feeling inside. Like, man, like, how can I read this and not be a better person? Exactly. How can I not do good? But if you all, if you've always been doing good, always been trying to be a better person, serving your community, serving your people, but you you know you're lacking a little bit of knowledge, you can learn knowledge. You can learn. You can, you can learn always knowledge. learn knowledge. You know what I mean? So, man, this is just it's it's crazy. And I think in the youth we're doing a, a, a little bit better. I think a lot better actually. Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. I, I would definitely give a shout out to the youth coming up because that's one thing. Man, there's powerful, powerful. Muslim women and men just online always yeah, pushing yeah. the religion, always pushing. Um, don't want to say the culture, but always pushing like just pushing the norm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think when our parents came here, at least for me, their first instinct was to make a living. You know, mm -hmm. this is country's new for me. You know, I'm coming in here. I'm Muslim, but it's like, hey, let me. Uh, right now, my goal is not to promote the religion. My goal is to kind of make face for my family and kind of establish ourselves. Now that our families are established, alhamdulillah, we're coming up as U.S. citizens now. You know what I mean? My people are U.S. citizens. You know? Now it's like, okay, now that we're U.S. citizens and now we're one of you guys, now let's start promoting our culture, let's start promoting our heritage, yeah. let's start promoting the religion because we have a voice now. Exactly. You know what I mean? At first, you didn't have visa, you got some paper, you say something wrong. Yeah, you're you trying to be a little bit reserved. You yeah. know, Hassan Minaj was saying that in yeah. the interview as well, like mm -hmm. how his parents didn't feel that they could speak out. But he's like, yo, I'm American. Yeah, exactly. These are my rights. These like, my I'm, rights. I'm going to say what I got to say mm -hmm. because there's no way I'm a citizen here and you're going to treat me as though I'm not a citizen. Yeah. And I think that it, that struggle, the it's, it's, it's funny because I'm an African American Muslim and I feel that the struggle for representation is almost the same. Just, for African Americans? Yeah. Think about it. We same thing for African Americans where we we have a very, very um tormented history in this country. Yeah. Yeah. And we've always had to kind of fight for our voice. And I and I feel the same way for Muslims. It's like Muslims have this very, very bad rep mm -hmm. and we have to really fight for our voice to be heard. Um and I and I think that now times are definitely getting better because mm -hmm. the the way we can communicate is better, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. People people are actively looking for a podcast, yes, and and we're able to provide that. So I think that we're doing a good job as of right now. However, I do sympathize with what your parents are going through because mm -hmm. even for for us, mm -hmm. like my parents, they wouldn't have thought that we would have been on a radio show, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Presenting Islam as strongly as we are now, especially the youth, because they're not used to that. Um, but I think that the foundation has been laid um, from, yes. you know, people like to joke on the nation of Islam. They like to joke on African-American Muslims, mm -hmm. but African Muslims, African-American Muslims are the ones that lay the foundation for all other Muslims to even do what they're doing. That's crazy. I never even thought about it that way.
because the first a lot of the first slaves that came here were Muslim. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of West Africa was Muslim, mm -hmm. right? So they brought them over here, yeah. and some of them practiced their faith secretly. Yeah. All right, they taught some of these things and they passed them down because Christianity was pushed on them. Exactly. Um, what's interesting fact is that uh, in a lot of the old Bibles that they gave slaves mm -hmm. at the top of um, like verses, they were write Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in oh, Arabic wow. because they thought a lot of them couldn't read and write. Yeah. However, they didn't know that they could read and write Arabic. Oh. <laughs> so a lot of them were, were because we come from the same Abrahamic uh, stem religions. Uh -huh. Judaism, Christianity, yeah. um, I, I believe even the Sabians before them, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're mentioned in the Quran. Yeah. So reading the Bible isn't an issue for us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I just think that it's funny that people don't acknowledge it. And then lean into the nation of Islam, they the nation of Islam was was placed for black people to really uh, straighten themselves up because after Reconstruction, yeah. they were they were just in shambles, mm -hmm. right? Because Jim Crow and all this stuff. Yeah. So to really elevate them, elevate their mindsets, see that they could be better than where they were, and Elijah Muhammad, yep. the founder of, um, well, one of the co-founders of the Nation of Islam, mm -hmm. said that his son, uh, W. D. Muhammad, Walid D. Muhammad, was the one that was going to actually teach the religion. He was only implicating the the Nation of Islam. To say this is what's going to help straighten you mm -hmm. and, and get you disciplined, get you mm -hmm. ready, very militant, um, but teaching like yo, like get your finances right, get your family life right, be up outstanding woman. Yep. They were teaching them how to be nurses, right? Like teaching the kids. They had schools, own school systems, getting people in the right positions in, in um, the public, mm -hmm. right? And then to teach the religion, he that he led one of the largest. No, he led the largest mass conversion of Muslims in America, W.D. Muhammad. Wow. You and know, just look at the different foundations, like you said, that were laid in the different phases. So Elijah Muhammad came in, you mentioned, got people up off the streets, off of drugs, brought them closer mm -hmm. to their family, because a lot of mm -hmm. people were just, they didn't know who their family was, they really didn't care about their family. Yeah. And then Malcolm X came in with that same mentality, but he was just he was he was he he had brute force. You know what I mean. He yeah. was really good at bringing the people together, and they all laid that foundation. And then when Malcolm, you know, we were because we're talking about race and Islam, they had a it was kind of like a fine line. You know what I mean back yeah. uh, with the nation of Islam because race was a big thing. Yeah. Just because at least everything that they went through that our, exactly. that our people exactly. went through. So it's kind of like man, well we have to fight our oppressor in a way. You know what I mean. So yeah. that's where all the really. You can say hatred, but I would say just where the division was. Like, hey, you do your own, we'll do ours. You know what I mean? Yeah, don't, exactly. Don't bother us anymore. And you can't blame them. Yeah. Like, you yeah, have to sure. build up yourself for after sure. going through all of that. For sure, man. Right. That, that is just like, you know, a wife being with a husband that just kept beating her. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden, she's like, look. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done with you. I'm trying to get my own house. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to get my own finances. Yeah, exactly. And the husband keeps trying to abuse. Yep. But what's important is, you know, a lot of people think the Nation of Islam was like, oh, the white man's the devil. They, mm -hmm. they know that part, mm -hmm. right? And they were teaching that for a while. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about Malcolm X. Yep. I believe we do have the letter that he wrote after he went to Hajj. Mm -hmm. um, when he went to Hajj, El Hajj Malik uh, Shabazz, right? When he returned, he saw that it wasn't about just the black struggle. It wasn't just about black people. It was the integration. Uh, that Islam promoted that it didn't matter where you were from, where you were born, what language you spoke, mm -hmm. how much Arabic you spoke. When he went to Hajj, he didn't even know how to pray. He didn't know how to pray properly, right? So he went there yeah. with the heart of Islam. The intention. Exactly. He had the intention. And then once he started learning, he gained the knowledge, mm -hmm. he started putting it into action. That's, I mean, we actually have the letter right here in front of it uh, with his birthday coming up. What is it, yeah. May 18th? Uh, May 19th. May 19th, so in about three days. So this was Malcolm X al Hajj Malik al Shabazz, letter from Mecca. He said, Never have I witnessed such sincere hospitality and overwhelming spirit of true brotherhood as is practiced by people of all colors and races here in this ancient holy land, the home of Abraham, Muhammad, and all the other prophets of holy scriptures. Peace be upon all of them. For the past week, I have been utterly speechless and spellbound by the graciousness I see displayed all around me by people of all colors. So just stop right there. Yeah. Humble. You know what I mean? He just not only humble, he was just overwhelmed by the brotherhood. 
and these were people of all different shades, you know what I mean, all yeah. different colors, yeah. and he just said he was speechless, you know what I mean, and one thing that I love when I met you, Jabil, and your family, you know, I'm from Egypt, and the majority of people that are in Egypt are lighter skin, fair skin, you know what I mean, the, mm -hmm. the minority is the people, which is my family, my culture, which is the Nubian tribe, which is southern Egypt and upper Sudan, you know what I mean? But that never changed the brotherhood. And one thing that you always told me, bro, is like, you had to kind of knock into my head. You're like, you're like Mo, you're black. Remember when yeah, I said that? Yeah, you're like, black. I said, bro, I'm not black. I'm, I'm, I'm Egyptian. Nah, you're black. <laughs> you black. So from there, I, I kind of realized it because like, whether I want to realize it or not, that's the category I'm going to be put in by other people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is not mm -hmm. good to categorize individuals, but that's what they're going to do. So I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to be put in that category, let me be prepared to talk about it. That's when I put. That's when I picked up the autobiography of Malcolm X and started mm -hmm. learning about the culture and everything like that. And I felt like that kind of grounded my roots here in America because I'm um, first generation Egyptian, second generation American. I think that were first generation. No, 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 no. I'm sixth generation Egyptian, first generation American. Sorry about that. Um, but... What, what, what I love that, about that most is when I came here, I met all different types of Muslims. I'm yeah, not used yeah. to meeting a white American Muslim. Crazy, isn't it? A black it? American Muslim. A Hispanic Muslim. A Mexican American Muslim or Mexican Muslim. I've exactly. never even seen that. It, 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 but that's the, that's the glory of our religion. It yeah. doesn't have a face. Yes. And that's, and that's mm -hmm. a big reason why mm -hmm. we don't depict the face of Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Peace and prayers be upon him. Because... We don't want anybody to think that. Uh, what, um, we actually have the the quote um, that he says. I think it's in the hadith. Do you have it up? Okay. Uh, let me see. Just pulling up right now. And, and you know why I found that. You know, it, it's important to to know that it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. Mm -hmm. It's about what your beliefs are. Yep, I should have it right here. So uh, it's Surah Al Rum. Um, Surah 30, Ayah 22. Among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the diversity of your languages and your colors. Verily, in that are signs for people of knowledge. Surely Allah speaks the truth. So that was actually out of the Quran, and that was which surah? That was Surah Al Rum, Ayah 22. Okay. So it, it, it explicitly says right then and there, like, this is for people of many different languages, many different tribes, many different areas of the world, and no one people have uh, domination over another. Mm. All right, just because you come from one place and you were born there doesn't mean that you're better than I am. That's arrogance. Exactly. You know, pride. It's and, pride. And, and there's there's no room for that in Islam. Cause it's I met people from you know Saudi Arabia and everything like that. They're like, this is where Islam started. I understand that, you know, I know my history and everything like that, but what does that mean? You know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, like our religion spread so much that I've actually had the blessing to actually come to us too, mm -hmm. you know? But just because it started there, that doesn't mean that it's only there. You yeah. know what I mean? It, exactly. It's, it's everywhere. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that that's where it's the richest, yeah. right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the, the, the best Muslims come out of here. Like that, there's no such thing. No. Like there's no, there's no like uh, place where these Muslims are the best type of mm -hmm. Muslims. Mm -hmm. They had their most purest Muslims. <laughs> like, what? That makes no sense. It makes literally no sense. So, you know, that's just something that's... You know what? I'm going to share this story. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I told you about... You know, you were there. When I first met you, and uh -huh. when we first went back to the ridge, when we first went up to Northern Virginia... Oh, um, See the ridge, baby. <laughs> when we went there, I remember... Um, I had just met your pops, mm -hmm. and you were kind of like showing me around the neighborhood and everything. And we went to your cousin, um, Abudi's brother. We went to his house oh, yeah, yeah. and had all the kids, all the women <laughs> there. Everybody was just cooking. <laughs> and and you're like, hey, we also like him, everybody. Hey, we like him, Muhammad, Muhammad. And then they were like, who's your friend? You're like, oh, this is your brother. They're like, oh, oh, nice to meet you, my friend. Nice to meet you. And then you're like, yeah, he's Muslim. Allah, 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 he had four wives on site, right? <laughs> they were like, "Do you want to marry my daughter?" <laughs> uh, but it was it was funny because like I could like that's something I'll never forget the noticeable difference from when they just thought I was just Joe Blow from off the street, some black dude, to <laughs> when they found out I was Muslim. It was like it was my birthday, yo. It was so crazy. But but why? That's what I'm saying. That doesn't make it right, though. It, it, exactly, it doesn't make it right. So it might why? Be funny, but it does not make it right. <laughs> it's so funny. 
Because, I mean, they were like, bro, Mo, I've met many of your friends, you know what I mean? Oh, it was just some, was another guy. But, oh, he's Muslim? Oh, yeah. The Brotherhood, yes, you know, the Muslim within the Brotherhood, but that's not, that's not what it meant. You know, there's actually another Sunni here that I actually love. Mm -hmm. Another one is Surah, Surah al hujrut Surah 49, Ayah 13. It said, O oh people, we have created you male and female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Verily, the most noble of you to Allah is the most righteous of you. Verily, Allah is knowing and aware. You know, I mean, so I mean, Allah. He, he this is part of his plan. He put different tribes to, just to see how you're gonna react, just yeah. how you're, you're gonna intermingle. So when my family met you, they should have had open arms, regardless. Period. Where you're from. Period. Period. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's kind of tough for the older generation to kind of swallow. I mean, think about our younger generation, bro. We're we're doing everything so different. We're hopping in cars with strangers and going places. Uber. You know what I mean? We're living with people for weeks upon weeks, Airbnb, and we're meeting them, we're getting to a lifestyle, and we're just, we're just getting to know one another, whether mm -hmm. it's online, physically, through mm -hmm. chat, I mean, I, I think that's just a blessing, and now the conversations are being more sincere, because people are actually curious now, like, hey, look, I know my uncles, my grandpa, stuff like that, they didn't really know about your religion, or just know about your people, can you tell me more about it, you know what I mean, and... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm trying. I'm teaching my parents too, cause it's tough. Cause older generation, they kind of tend to stereotype, you know, yeah. what I mean? really yeah. easily. Just cause growing up, my families were around who the Egyptians twenty four seven. Exactly. Everybody in my family's Egyptian. And you don't know anything else. It anything is, else. It's funny because in this country, we always associate that with like rednecks and stuff like that. But that's everybody. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. everybody. Like mm -hmm. people, a lot of people out here aren't lack of a better term, culture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. they, they, we make a lot of assumptions about the other people and mm -hmm. without actually trying to get to know who they are and what they're about. Um, and that's why I made the video about people saying Muslim, right? Yeah. right? They say Muslim. It's like, listen, like, you know, a lot of times these are the people that, that know nothing about us and the first thing that, <laughs> that gives it away is the way that you say the word. Um, but even in the Quran, right, that, that verse you read, such a beautiful verse, mm -hmm. If you notice in the Quran, it says, Oh, you who believe. Oh, you who believe. That's what it comes down to. Oh, people. Mm -hmm. Right? It doesn't say, Oh, Muslims. It doesn't, mm -hmm. say, it doesn't say, Oh, black people. Yes. Oh, Arabs. Oh, it Arabs. says, Oh, you who believe. And so we're all joined together by our belief in one God, mm -hmm. and that Muhammad is his humble servant mm -hmm. and messenger. It's Tawheed, yes. Yeah? <laughs> so, anything else is exempt. Like, none of this stuff matters mm -hmm. at all. Or it's, or it's just man made. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah, or it's. It's perfect. It's legit man made, and that's probably gonna be another topic that we go into down the line in regards to culture. You know, culture yeah. does play a big part. But now we're just talking about race. You know, we're talking about race within the religion. There mm -hmm. is no specific race when it comes to Islam. There, like Jabril said, there is no faith. Which, you know, I, I want to get back to that point because it's very interesting. Because one thing that I do love about Islam is like when we go into a mosque, we don't see a face of a perfect. Muslim, you know what I mean? Yeah. We don't see a statue like, hey, this is who you need to be, you know? Because mm -hmm. we all have different roles, you know? Exactly. We all have different strengths, different mm -hmm. weaknesses, different jobs. And, and we look different. We look we look different. So to come in and be like, hey, you need to have a long beard, which, I mean, the prophet did have a beard, peace be upon him. So you follow his son and everything like that. But you might not be able to grow a beard. Then what you going to do? Are you, are you trying to call me out? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I got a little, little I got a little scruff. Five o'clock shadow. But, but... but to that point, though, just because the prophet had a beard doesn't mean that you need to have a beard. Mm -hmm. and, um, American or Mexican black, she was mixed. And she, she said she was going to convert to the religion because her husband or the person that she was talking to was Muslim. And I asked if she was currently Muslim. She was like, no, because she didn't learn everything and the guy ended, ended up just leaving her. You know, For what it's worth, she said, I still fast every Ramadan. And she said the discipline that I gained from it is just irreplaceable yeah. you know what I mean she's absolutely love it so even if she converts or not at that point she has gained something that's gonna help her for the rest of her life exactly you know what I mean so that's awesome that is awesome so going back to a little bit more about his letter he says we're talking about Malcolm X again for those of you guys who might just tuned in I have been blessed to visit the holy city of Mecca I have made my seven circuits around the Kaaba 
led by a young Matawaf named Muhammad. I drank water from the well of Zamzam. I ran seven times back and forth between the hills of Mount Al Safa and Al Marwa. I prayed in the ancient city of Mina and I prayed on Mount Arafat. There were tens of thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. They were of all colors, from blue eyed blondes to black skinned Africans. But we were all participating in the same ritual, displaying a spirit of unity and brotherhood that my experiences in America had led me to believe never could exist between the white and non white. Wow. <laughs> wow. This man's third eye opened up. <laughs> For those of you guys just listening, you can't see me. I'm just, I'm just dead. Well, they can see you because we have a YouTube channel. Make sure you guys go and subscribe. Yes, 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 yes. yes. The Young Men Muslim Podcast. Oh yes. So, this uh, that 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 paragraph in itself just summed up the entire letter. Yeah, yeah. and it just summed up letter. everything that we were just talking about. They mm -hmm. were of all colors, from blue-eyed blondes to black-skinned Africans. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, that leads into this uh, hadith mm -hmm. that, I, that I found, and uh, Prophet Muhammad was cited saying, certainly mankind is of two types, mm -hmm. the true believer who has piety and nobility to Allah, mm -hmm. and the sinner who is lost and despicable in the sight of Allah. That's it. That was none of that. He didn't say nothing about no skin color. You in two channels. Either you on or you off. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Ain't nothing else. Either the light is on you or it ain't. Period. Either you're doing good or you're doing bad. It's kind of like the truth, right? The truth is, 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 um, dang, what's the word? The truth wins every time, mm -hmm. right? Either you tell the truth or you ain't. Or the truth surfaces. It's yeah. gonna surface. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. The cream of the crop is always gonna rise. Always. Always. I mean, you, you, even after you, man, man, right now, uh, man, I was talking to you know a brother, and he was just telling me that um, sometimes, you know, oh no, no, it was actually I'm not talking brothers from my personal experience right now. One thing I've been trying to be more conscious of is when I meet different Muslims and stuff like that. You know, I'm saying assalamu alaikum instead of like, hey, what's up? Well, you know, we'll look like kind of like the old term yeah. I used to be using. And first thing that comes to their head is like, oh, well, I was trying to hit this religious tone on me and stuff like that. It's like, no, that's the right thing to do. I uh, agree. Everybody with really agrees. Even non-Muslims. Non-Muslims. Yeah. Look, when yeah. you go to Arab-speaking countries, like you probably experienced this in Egypt, mm -hmm. everybody says as come. Everybody. 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 Even they're Christian. They yeah. they say it right. Mm -hmm. Every look. Here's the other thing. People say Allah as well because Allah just means God. Yes. And so that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, just to, just to throw that in there. But you know what? There's a um. You know, I I wish I would have found this a little bit earlier. I had it, but um, this right here is another hadith. That, that was read mm -hmm. and it says surely all of mankind from the time of Adam until our time are like the teeth of a comb all equal to one another mm -hmm. and there is no greatness for an Arab over a non-Arab and no greatness for a red-skinned person over a black-skinned person except due to one's consciousness of Allah talk with oh man I don't I mean, think I, I think we can end the podcast right, right. here let's wrap drop the mic blah 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 <laughs> um, so one thing that we're looking to do because we are releasing podcasts twice a week yeah. Monday and Wednesday um, we want 7 to 7 a.m. make sure you guys tune in yeah, it's not um, we wanted to start incorporating some of what's actually happening within the world yeah. just like small small or big events that are happening mm -hmm. um, there have been some recent things that have gone on that we've seen surface via Twitter and yep. obviously what's going on in Gaza with uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis. Yep. And we figured that we would just talk a little bit on some of the things. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like I personally, I'm not knowledgeable in a lot of stuff that's going on in, in Gaza. So mm -hmm. I don't want, I want to kind of refrain from that. Yep. But I think what our intent is with this is to Shed some light. Yeah, to, to make people aware of what's going on. Um, and so there's a few different things that have happened, mm -hmm. and we kind of want to just, some of the things we can go in depth yes. on. Um, and we will. And, and, you know, some of that hits close to home. Yeah. Um, especially with Sister Nabra, yeah, who's going to pass. Well, it's almost been a year. It's June, almost yeah, a year uh, more. June 18th. Yeah, I, was, I was flying out to Egypt today. I think the day before it happened. Remember I called you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in North Carolina I was, I was, at the time. I was in the airport. 
right now, let's definitely start off with uh, what's going on with Gaza. Just as Jibril has mentioned, we're not too knowledgeable on the topic, but we'll just kind of give you a 30,000 foot overview. Um, I think basically, it was about on Monday between, I think, like 50 to 60 uh, Palestinians uh, were killed. And then what they were doing, they were protesting basically because, well, not because, but what was going on was that the U.S. Embassy had officially opened in Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, so Donald Trump went ahead and kind of made that known, so he kind of did that. And then people think that just because of that incident, that's when the killing happened. No, they've been protesting there for years, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. for 70 years. Mm -hmm. And there was something that was called Nakba. That was where it first started all. And what, um, and I actually just learned this yesterday myself, and uh, what Nakba means, um, it is also known as disaster in Arabic. You know, wow. yeah, it's when the disaster first happened in 1948. It was the Palestinian exodus when hundreds and thousands of Palestinians were basically kicked out of their homeland and everything like that. And then for seven years, they've been protesting to get their land back, you know, mm -hmm. get their homes back. And then on Monday, they basically were like, hey, these people are crossing the borders. So the Israeli, is Israel, people of Israel, the military started shooting like, gas, you know, gas, tear gas, and just like different type of ammunition and yeah. killing individuals. And the youngest individual that got killed was eight months. And, and, and I brought up the death toll and the people, average average age was in the teens and early 20s. And you talking about this happened this Monday, week? Like, Monday, yeah, uh, wow. look, today the 16th, happened on the 14th. And it's crazy because there were like, the people and the news, the media was twisting and saying that, oh man, Israel's under attack. So you're telling me that people that are throwing rocks, people basically on foot protesting is called under attack. So you just go ahead and kill them when your military is so much stronger and these people are basically selfless, you know what I mean? They're like, they're helpless, not selfless, they're helpless, you know what I mean? So that's, I, I would recommend you guys doing a lot more research as I had I mentioned, we're not too knowledgeable on what's going on. Yeah. But definitely look into what's going on because this is a very, 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 um, it's, this is a pretty big issue. Yeah. You know, that's affect people like, oh yeah, it doesn't really affect me. I'm in the United States. Well, the U.S. is getting involved. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it does pertain to you. Look, I think above all else, yeah, right? above all else. Um, people are people. We're all stem from the same family, yeah. right? We all stem from the same soul of the world. Yeah. And for people to be so cutthroat yeah. and to have this mentality of us versus them, or it's gonna be us or them, mm -hmm. um, just killing innocent people is, is crazy. And condoning that, um, yeah. thinking that there's any reason to do that is, is crazy. Um, you know, the prophet said that killing one person is like killing all of humanity. Mm -hmm. and people now we're seeing people have this coldness in their hearts because listen i remember growing up people used to say don't play grant that follow because it teaches kids to be bad and stuff mm -hmm. like that right and you know a lot of the games are about killing and stuff like that and look i played those games sure I, I enjoy them however i think that we're i think that there isn't a limit there's no people aren't putting a self-imposed limit on how much of that stuff that they expose themselves to mm -hmm. right they're they're burning themselves out. They're burning out their 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 heart. You mm -hmm. feel me? Because it when you're when you really don't have any sort of sympathy you towards something like this, you get cold inside. And I, I'm seeing people that we've we've known for years that are like, oh, like let's go USA, go and I'm like, yo, yeah. like, you realize like children yeah. are getting bombed. Like, could you imagine our houses getting bombed every, like, every other day? Yeah, crazy. Like, and I, I, I was watching a lot of what was going on in the Gaza Strip, um, mm -hmm. like middle of last year, because mm -hmm. I, I was I was donating to different um, charities mm -hmm. that uh, Iman, who mm -hmm. we, we shout out in the last podcast, she um, had a tweet that went extremely viral. And that's when I first got to know her. Mm -hmm. um, I started donating to different organizations that, you know, I researched and I was like, OK, these people are doing what's right mm -hmm. and so on and so on. Um, but it's just crazy to see all this stuff. Like, I was literally just crying because it's like, yo, this is, is it's crazy. And a lot of people don't have that sympathy anymore. And I think that in order to get back to our better selves, we have to kind of look at what's going on in the world and 
see how we can better forget politics, yeah. forget nationalities. Yeah. Like these are people yeah, that are being, they're being killed, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's why I think this is appropriate for a topic we're on. It doesn't like all that matters is that we're people. Religion aside, it has, yeah. it has nothing to do with religion. Yeah, you know, I was even talking with one, one of my uh, you know friends and everything, and he was like. Yeah, you know, Israel belongs to the Jews, no, it belongs to the Muslims, and I see a lot of people going back and forth. I'm like, no, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's not about religion, you know, it's the land, it's the land of the people. At one point, Christians, Jews, and Muslims lived there without any problems. Mm -hmm. What happened? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There was no problems. What happened? So, just like we said, definitely do some research on this topic because it's going to be talked yeah. about a lot, a lot more throughout the week. So, and um, we actually have two other um, topics that we want to go into, or two other uh, storylines or headlines. One is about um, that's near and dear to my heart: uh, the killing of Nabra Hassanin who was a Nubian Egyptian who lived in Reston, Virginia, Cedar Ridge, so the community that I was raised and lived for 19 years. And it's almost a one year mark since what had happened is a very, very, very tragic uh, story. She, her, her friends, her and her friends were, because it was during the, uh, it, during the it was the last 10 days. So like the la you know the last ten days it's seen as like the most blessed because that's almost the night you know they call the night of power the night of power so latest the color so we don't know what day it was but she left the mosque in um, Sterling Virginia which is Adams yeah uh, the all Dallas area Muslims Association and then once she was leaving her and her friends went to McDonald's it's probably like a mile away and yeah. that's what the kids do they yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead after prayers cause you, as you should be able yeah, to you've been praying all night let's get some snacks let's eat and then get ready to pray Fajr and then fast so they were heading over there and everything like that and then I'm not sure if it's on the way there or on the way back um, they encountered a Hispanic individual and it was about a group of like 12 or 13 individuals mixed with girls and guys fairly young mm -hmm. and um, they clashed with the guy because I guess the guy was on the road and the kids had bikes and everything. So the, I don't know if the guy was messing with them or the kids started messing with him. I'm not really sure what happened first. But then the Hispanic individual that was in the car ended up just busting a U-turn. Because I guess he was fed up and he was drunk. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning, right? And then when he gets out the car, he pulls out a baseball bat and then starts chasing all the young kids. And the kids just start running away because... This yeah, is a course. drunk 21, 22 year old guy that's mad about something, you know? And once he's chasing them, Nabra Hassanin, the young uh, Nubian Egyptian, falls down and she gets caught by the guy. And then she gets a blow on the back of her head with the baseball bat. And then that kind of just like knocks her out. And then the guy just takes her and basically just drags her away. And then everybody else is just. They're just not looking back, you know what I mean? The, there's young individuals and there's no blame on anybody in this type of situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they just run away and then when the guy gets a hold of her, he ends up, you know, maybe he doesn't know what happened, but he ends up raping her and then putting her in the back of his trunk and then going to like the nearest pond and then just yeah. dropping off her body. Yeah, and we don't want to make this too like gruesome yeah. for, no. for anybody. No. But, um, so what, what's like the update on So I mean the update what's, was what's that, happening? so what's happening right now is that, um, I think it was back in October, end of 2017, the guy got sentenced to life in prison and everything cool. like that, so, but the parents, should. the parents do want the death penalty, which I mean I definitely agree, um, but uh, they're not sure if it's going to happen yet in Virginia, so we're still waiting on that update. There has been many, many different organizations that have been giving her funds and stuff like that, and this death like, kind of like, it, there is going to be justice. Like, her father and her mother are working very hard to spread the word. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm, hey, mm -hmm. we got to make sure we're protecting our youth in the community. We got to yeah. make sure that they know what's going on. Like, yeah. if you're going out and stuff like that, make sure you go on packs. You know what I mean? Know that this is real. Some people don't like Muslims. That's, that's just real. You know what I mean? They don't like people of faith in general. You know what I mean? So just make sure you're safe, make sure you're cautious. And, Man, it's crazy. Um, shout out to the Poise Project. They ended up building eight different water wells around the globe in mm -hmm. her name. And they just opened up a new mosque for her in Mali. 
Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, that's, that's man. Great. So I don't know when that's that video, great. when the update will be coming out. You guys just got a sneak peek. You guys can say you heard it, heard it here first. Um, but yeah, man, that was just you know something near and dear to my heart because she was from our community. But just to see a mosque that was opened up for her, everybody that comes in there and prays, she's gonna get the blessing for that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So that's great, man. I mean, look, I, I know that's that's a yeah, tough time very, to talk very, on, very um, but at the end of it. Uh, at where where the end of this story is, mm -hmm. it's all very positive yep. that has come out of it, yep. and um, the sacrifice that she paid, man, yep. is is tremendous. Mm -hmm. However, I think that a lot of people will be safer going forward. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of kids are going to be safer now from now on um, because of that, right? And it it's just crazy because you know I think like yo that could be my sister, mm -hmm. but. Now, because of everything that's happened, I feel as though they are a bit safer. Mm -hmm. um, people do have that empathy towards her parents and her and and the Muslim community that like, yo, we're all. I didn't even know her that well. Mm -hmm. I didn't know her at all. Mm -hmm. um, I only know her through you and yeah. your family. And even for me, like that, that hit me pretty hard because it's like, yo, like that's not very far removed from where I am. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. um, that they'll be like something happened, you know, to one of my cousins or yeah. something, and, you know, it's, it's very close. So, you know, it, it's is a bad situation that had a very, very positive outcome come from it. Because now people are going to be able to pray, yeah. gonna have a sensor, and people are going to be able to have fresh water. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's very positive. So, at the end of the day. Um, yeah, we want to. We don't want us to be doing no, no, no. We want. We want to be, you know, upbeat with it. Um, however, <laughs> one of the the last topics uh, that that surfaced was it um, no, last. Yeah. It was last week. Mm -hmm. A young Sudanese girl um, who was put into a forced marriage by her parents in Sudan. Her name is uh, Nur Hussein. Mm -hmm. She was forced to marry this individual, uh, and. And Sudan when she was 16 years old yeah. and instead of marrying him she decided that she wants to flee and for three years she stayed with her aunt um, and and she stayed there and, and I couldn't imagine you know what what she was going through uh, but after three years her parents approached her and said hey we canceled the marriage you should come home um, however they were lying to her and when she got home there was already a ceremony being set up and she was forced to marry this man and days after she still wouldn't consummate the marriage mm -hmm. and this man had three of his relatives come hold her down and he raped her um, and then the following night he tried to do so again yep. and she stabbed him and mm -hmm. killed him mm -hmm. and so now she's in a situation where the Sudanese government is she's they, in prison, in prison. Yeah, she's in prison and mm -hmm. they are giving her the death penalty she yep. was sentenced to the death penalty last Thursday and a lot of people are uproar mm -hmm. because this is entirely unfair. Yep. Um, I don't know. It doesn't. The article that I have doesn't necessarily say what faith they are. Um, but in Sudan, I know it's predominantly Muslim. There's Christians in Sudan. Yep. Under those principles, at no circumstance, under no circumstance, is it the man's right to force a mm -hmm. woman into heaven? Mm -hmm sex with them if the woman says no she says no even for the marriage even if they're trying to yeah like, exactly hey i found somebody but they're like no i don't want him that's it i mean that is that is end of story you know what i mean yeah exactly Nothing more and so there's so many wrongs in this story mm -hmm. um however there have been so many people that have been sending her letters yeah. and a lot of people are protesting on her behalf um and so there's you know on this article there's a picture of the the court date when she was sent when the the trial date and mm -hmm. a lot of people are there and protest for her yeah um and so you know all we do we can just send our prayers yep. and um our best wishes for humanity that you know justice prevails and that she is she is acquitted of all charges but think about I me mean, we're with all these different recent events we're trying to pull the positive out of it you know yeah, what i mean of course that's the goal and for this who knows, because of what happened with her and just the uproar, this might be the last time that anything like this ever happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. in Sudan or other different countries, stuff like that might happen every single day that nobody knows about. Yeah. So that is the power of the internet. That is the power of people coming together and supporting a cause like this. I think right now it's, it's on, what is it, hashtag Nura? 
Mm -hmm. I think you can find out on Twitter and everything like that, and you just see just the unconditional love with different individuals that are reaching out and just like Jabril said, writing letters, reaching out to her and telling her like, hey, what happened is, you know, s stay strong. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. stay strong in this situation. I, I mean, I'm, I'm really curious to see what comes out of this, man. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm definitely be keeping in touch with us. Oh, yeah. And then the last story, it, this one isn't funny, but it's like, yo, this man got the hands. Savage. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so this this Muslim sister in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, was assaulted by a man whom she was delivering food to. She's a, a, a food delivery driver, mm -hmm. um, and one of the customers that she dropped off the food to grabbed her by the nakib, that's like the the full headscarf, and he was uh, he yelled to her, "I'm Jesus, mm -hmm. crazy, All right?" Uh, in the process of him going through his wallet, oh yeah, in the process of him going through his wallet, like to give the food, he, he goes. Oh, I'm Jesus. And mm -hmm. she, I remember her ass, she was like, yo, I, I was like, what the heck? And so as she leaves, She's actually in 20, cuz. <laughs> um, she felt, she says that uh, as she was leaving, she felt the 54 year old man grab her headscarf from behind. Um, and this is her saying this. He, he's grabbing me and trying to choke me with my own to keep. Yep. I kept telling the man, I've got kids in the midst of me fighting him. He grabbed my head. Yep. He thought he was Jesus. But Jesus would do that to nobody. Mm -hmm. And she is exactly right. All right. Uh, according to the news station, she used her finger to poke his eye and her car key to fight back. Sister, can you go, girl? Egg. Mm. You go, sister. Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> in the midst of me stabbing this man, he's saying, oh, that feels good. Like, just this sick. is just sick. Uh, he seemed normal. Anybody, anybody would have went in. Police are said to have arrested the Mr. Painter after Miss King Just called nine one one. Yeah, good stuff, police. They they get a lot of slack, especially from you know you know the black community. But I think in this instance, they they came in, they did their job brilliantly. But let round of applause for for Sister King because she she did her thing. Man, she that that was a life and death situation. Yeah. Dude, man, it's just so hard for females, just of any race, of any faith, man. I just, my sympathy for you guys, because yeah. it's like, I couldn't even imagine. I never think about anything like that, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I go on somewhere, I'm good, you know? So, sisters, you know, carry, just women in general, carry something on you, pepper spray. Yeah. Like, yeah. you never know. Mm -hmm. And I say all women. All women. Right? That's all, what I said. Yeah. All, all women. women. It, it's funny because after, you know, Trump got elected in and and you know how he felt about Muslims and things like that mm -hmm. you saw a, a bunch of people starting to just be forthcoming with how they felt about Muslims right yeah. they were showing Islamophobia and they were they were just doing the utmost right mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff was happening to women mm -hmm. simply because you can identify a Muslim yeah. woman like somebody's not gonna look at you and be like oh you're Muslim yeah, exactly. right exactly. Um, but we look at the women and because they wear the hijab um, the hijab, by the way, isn't just a scarf. The, the hijab is how they dress mm -hmm. in entirety. Mm -hmm. um, the modest, the modest way of dressing. Modest look, yeah. Um, is is very easy to spot a Muslim woman, kind of like a Sikh, a Sikh man, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we can identify them a lot easier. So it, you know, it's, it's it's just crazy because they get all the slack. But here's here's what she said after all that. This this right here, I love this because this goes right back to everything we've been saying. By the love of Allah, I knew he was not going to allow this man to kill a believer. Uh, Yo. <laughs> Yo, she was not playing no games. Rewind. That's <laughs> the <Rewind. laughs> Yeah, like, she she was like, listen, I got law on my side. Mm -hmm. She, she mm -hmm. was fighting, man. And I, I have so much respect for her. And just women in general, women of the faith, I have respect for her. For Muslims out here, anybody that's gone through any sort of torment, yep, teasings, yeah, the struggle, man, it's, it's real. Yeah. It's real. So, yeah, that's that's all the, the news that we have for the time being. Mm -hmm. uh, we think we're going to make this kind of like a, a regular thing. We're going to try and have a mixture of news. So yes, we have a <laughs> part can, You guys are probably driving and I probably had to stop the car a few times just to kind of <laughs> hold in all the tears or something, man. Yeah, man. But, but you know, it is... Look, I, I think we're in a position in the world where the world is getting better because yeah. stuff like this is actually being called out. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, it just happened. It, it just happened. You know, like 
people would just disappear yeah. in the black community. Like, Reynolds says, your 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 kid would disappear, and you wouldn't see him again. That's you it. know what happened to him, right? And that's why you know we went to the African American History and Culture Museum. The story of Emmett Till is so important. A lot of people think about his face and and, and stuff, right? Which is very important, but. One thing that I realized that was more important was they tried to sink him after yes. they beat him, yep. but he rose back up to the top, and his mom said, "Leave the casket open so his, people could see him." His mom was a real trooper. At that exactly, time. because she because she understood, she bro. Understood. She understood what that was going to do, and to this day, it still affects people. So being able to, you know, talk about what happened to Nabra, mm -hmm. and what's happening to Sister Nura, mm -hmm. and what happened to Sister. King mm -hmm. and for that to be out there and to get news coverage is important because that means that people know yep. one don't mess with Sister King, mm -hmm. <laughs> <All right. laughs> two that we have to cover our women. We have mm -hmm. to as men we need to protect our women yes. more, especially in the Muslim community because mm -hmm. we are being targeted, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then three, all right for for other incidents just skin related like. Stuff like this, like it's out there, and we're mm -hmm. talking about it. And mm -hmm. People now know we're we're forthcoming about like, yo, listen, we we we're all inclusive right now. We don't we don't we don't discriminate. We're there's no colorist here. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because racism is a system. Colorism is the color of the skin. I just learned that not too long ago, and I want to point that out. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. Fact of the day. Hey, so uh. Is that, is that it? Like, yeah, man. I mean, now it's just, we want to hear from you guys. You know, we want to hear from our audience. Um, so the Young and Muslim podcast, you can find us on SoundCloud, Google Play. We even just started our YouTube channel. So you can find us on YouTube if you're a visual learner or just visual individual. You just want to see Jabril's face. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Always oh, smiling out here. I'm going to get tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you just said in the last podcast that smiling was a, a form of worship. I did. Bit of, and, 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 and charity. Come on, that was a cop, bro. Don't, don't, don't. don't, don't, don't right. Come on, man. I'm giving us a cop on the daily. Give us my book. Hey. And what else? You guys can find us on Twitter and Instagram, both at Young and the letter N Muslim. That's Young and Muslim. Um, and please uh, reach out to us. Or if you just want to send us an email, it's youngmuslimusa at gmail.com. We want to thank you guys for joining us today and listening to us, uh, two brothers and best friends, just having fun. Oh, yeah. Just having fun oh, yeah. with you guys. So, we're going to hit you with the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>